Just a few weeks ago, I talked about my favorite episode in all of Thomas and Friends, that being the season 5 classic Put Upon Percy. As a whole though, season 5 is one of my favorites, and I'd be lying if I said most of the episodes in it didn't contain classic status. Put Upon Percy for me was just always special, but it's far from the only one in this season. And on that note, today I'd like to talk about another season 5 episode, this time being James and the Trouble with Trees, an episode that I assume like many of you, is something I grew up watching very fondly and I have very many fond memories of it, especially if you had the take and play version of this, it was awesome. But merchandise aside, this episode was one of the greatest, and today I'd like to go through the plot of it, what made it the greatest, and just like Put Upon Percy, why we'll likely never have another one like it again. So with all of that being said, let's go ahead and jump into it. Ladies and gentlemen, this was James and the Trouble with Trees. So before anything, let's start with the plot of this episode. The episode itself starts off kind of like a Thomas story, or you'd be forgiven for thinking it will be, as it shows Thomas at the coal mines very dirty and upset at that. His driver tells him he likely won't be able to get a wash down that night, and Thomas thinks the other engines will make fun of him. But upon returning to the sheds, find they're in their own debate. James is supposed to be getting a new coat of paint and is posting to the others about this, something Percy is quick to tell Thomas, since it's apparently been like that all day. Thomas replies, if anyone needs a new coat of paint, it's him, but James very quickly deflects this. I'm the one who needs a new coat. Look at me. I'd rather not. It just so happens that next morning, James is being repainted, and he oversees Henry get into a small accident. James seeing this, of course, makes a remark to Henry, saying if he can't do work in the yards, he should go back to the forest. To which Henry replies that Sir Topham had is having work done in the forest anyway, and inspecting for any trees that may be too close to the line. Just like earlier, James shrugs off this idea, saying if he were to encounter a tree, he would just push it out of the way, implying that it shouldn't be much of a nuisance, finally giving Henry something to scoff back at. If I came upon a tree, I'd just push it aside. <laughs> really, Henry replied. More or less kind of challenging the idea, but ultimately serving James's little ego trip even more. I'm sure you can see the plot developing pretty quickly here. Soon after this, James goes around the island showing off his paintwork, where he just so happens to go to the forest where Thomas, Terence, and Percy are working, on the job that Henry mentioned earlier. Percy says James wouldn't feel so important if one of the trees happened to fall on him, to which James says it wouldn't dare. Really testing the plot there. Even Terence advises James that trees can be just as powerful as engines, but very quickly James shrugs this off, saying that Sir Topham Hatt needs him for an important job, and soon leaves to pull the express. Upon arriving at the express, James is met by Sir Topham Hatt, who informs him that instead of pulling the express, he has to go pick up a goods train, warning him that it's quite a heavy one and to be careful. James, of course, is not happy with this idea and asks if another engine can do it since he just got repainted, to which Sir Topham Hatt says really useful engines don't argue, and very quickly James leaves the platform. He arrives at the yards with the trucks where one of the most savage burns in the entire series is laid out, your color's nice, James. Pity about your face, though. And pretty quickly, James arranges his train. He quickly takes off, but the weather soon changes, with the wind definitely not being in his favor. And it just so happens he has to go through the forest he was just at. While going through the forest, a tree that's pretty close to the line starts getting loose. And just as James is rounding a bend, he happens to notice that it's getting onto the track. He applies his brake, stopping just in front of it, but unfortunately not out of the way of danger. As he goes to reverse, he finds he can't. His consist is too heavy, and the tree could fall on him at any second. It just so happens that right around this time, Thomas shows up to save the day. And when James is sure he's going to be ridiculed, Thomas instead jumps to action, very quickly pulling him and his train out of the way of danger, and just in time too. And following this, the day is saved. After this, it shows Thomas and James in the yards, and the two are talking. James, of course, thanks Thomas for saving him, to which Thomas says engines need to stick together. Right after this, Edward happens to pull into the yard, where he informs them both that Sir Topham Hatt thinks they're both very brave, and that the next day, Thomas will finally get that new coat of paint, and that also, James, instead of pulling another goods train, will finally pull the Special Express. So, in the end, it kind of worked out for everybody. That seemingly random Thomas plot at the beginning is very quickly resolved, as well as brought back around, and James learns his lesson, as well as getting a pretty good ending as well, even though he could have almost died. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is largely the plot. To me, explaining why this episode is special at first was kind of hard, since truth be told, I'm just biased to season 5. But I also think there's key elements at play in this episode that make it special. 
Kind of like I said with Put Upon Percy, the entire episode has an aesthetic that's pretty hard to beat. Everything from the opening coal mine to the beautiful shots of Tidmouth Sheds, to the unexpectedly intimidating shots of the tree almost falling on James. The atmosphere in this episode is amazing. But just like I said with Put Upon Percy, that's something that can be argued with all of Season 5. What I really like about this episode specifically is what it shows through characters. The worst of each and every character is put on display, at least for the most part. Thomas isn't very cheeky in this episode and of course is quick to help, but if you look at James directly, for almost the entire episode he's being nothing but arrogant and kind of a prick. To me and many others, that is James. He's a vain red engine, who's very pompous and tries to be more than he is. It's not just with James though, I mean look at Henry, who instead of letting James be that way is arguing right back with him at the sheds. And the next day after getting in the crash doesn't really play it off or anything like that, immediately proceeds to argue with James again. And when James starts getting a little bit too conceived, and starts thinking things that are quite absurd, he doesn't think to talk him down. Instead, he kinda tries it. That's just something you don't see in the later series of Thomas and Friends. It's something you would never see in All Engines Go. It's something that makes this episode and others like it so special. It feels so real. The characters are dynamic and they're not perfect. They have a lot to learn and each has their own little quirks. And when it's displayed like this, I think there's more to learn. One, this episode teaches you you should not play around with trees if they could fall on you. Two, it shows you that being vain really doesn't get you anywhere. And three, shows you that teamwork is very important all without really having to try to. These aren't things that are screamed at you. They just kind of play out and you pick up on them. One of the biggest problems I had with the newer series of Thomas and Friends was how picture perfect some of the characters had to be at times. This definitely wasn't the case all the time, but through the majority, it felt as if they were trying to keep a squeaky clean image and not really test any boundaries or push things too far. And that is something that will forever separate the classic series from the newer stuff, maturity. It trusts us as a viewer to pick up on these things, it doesn't really shove them down our throat. We just see characters who can be flawed learn. And that was enough. I could say we almost saw James die, but I kinda feel like I said that enough with Put Upon Percy. Maturity, atmosphere, tone, this episode happened to have it all. And while these three things are pretty hard to balance in something like a kid's show, that's one of the reasons I and so many others fell in love with Thomas and Friends and Trains as a whole. Trains as a hobby require maturity, and Thomas and Friends at this time at least really tried to teach that in ways that weren't corny or outdated. And it's for that reason I don't think we'll ever have another episode like this. We're in an era now where Thomas and Friends is trying to be Paw Patrol, instead of a railway where uh, trains work. And in that, we've lost almost all of this maturity. I know I'm kind of beating a dead horse saying this, but regardless, it's always something I personally will be attached to, just like the other fans of the classic series. And if you haven't watched this episode, I highly recommend you do. As always guys, thanks again for watching. And if you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe for even more train content. There's always more stuff on the way. Really quick, I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons, since videos like this wouldn't be possible without their support, and on the chance you'd like to see videos like this early or show support in another way, I recommend you check that out too. As always guys, thanks again for watching. And with all of that being said, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. You wouldn't feel important if one of those trees crashed on you. You'd feel hurt, reproached Percy. Rubbish! It wouldn't dare! Either, either, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. And because people really want me to mention this, I should note that the Reverend W. Audrey actually came back from the grave in this episode. Not to make an appearance, not for a cameo, not even to trip Britt Allcroft, but to move the head of the driver figure in Thomas's cab. Shocking. You could argue that the figure is blue tacked down anyway, and the head can move anyway, and Thomas is an RC locomotive that is moving anyway. But it's easier to blame the ghost of the Reverend W. Audrey, so let's just all do that, right? Give me a break.